PowerPoint presentation is an integral part of our daily lives, especially in business and academic environments. How you prepare and make PowerPoint presentations says so much about you, and most people lose their credibility and scores as a result of poor content arrangement and presentation. I have been in academic and business events and I have seen quite several times when some highly ranked personalities, dignitaries, students and business leaders made very disgusting and boring presentations. But remember, the brain does not pay attention to boring things. It doesn't matter how many times you have made PowerPoint presentations or how many times you've seen other people presenting in a particular way. I want you to know that what is a common practice may not necessarily be right. And most people learned the PowerPoint presentation in a wrong way. So I thought of putting this forward to help people break away from the bad practices and to help them create powerful content and deliver indelible presentation using the Microsoft PowerPoint presentation software. First, I would like to share the bad habits in PowerPoint presentations so that to avoid them. And the first I would like to share is too much text in your slides. You are not expected to use too many text in your slides because it's called PowerPoint. We expect you to put only the powerful points so that you are the one to explain the rest for us. So in your PowerPoint presentation, we expect you to put some short phrases or some, some few words in each slide so that it will not be too bulky. And one of the bad habits is reading from the slides. If it is reading from the slides, then your audience can read too. So there's no point for you to read them what is in the slides verbatim because the purpose of PowerPoint presentation is to discuss and share your mind and connect with their audience. So the audience are not expecting you to read from the slides. This is one of the most boring and disgusting thing anyone can do when it comes to PowerPoint presentation. Do not read from the slides like you are reading a handout or you are reading a written speech. And one of the bad habits in PowerPoint presentation is lack of mastery of the content. Most people, they come for PowerPoint presentation without mastering the content. For you to do PowerPoint presentation, you have to really know what you are talking about. You have to know the content so that you don't have to rely on so many texts for you to explain your point. A little trigger of some of the points you want to talk about will be enough for you to explain your points. And people have problems with combination of colors. I mean, the text color, color of the text they're using in the PowerPoint presentations. So some people might, for example, mix red and purple or purple and pink, you know, there's, there's some color combination which are very odd and not really pleasing. So maintain simple colors, I'm going to talk about that too. Um, another thing that people do, which is a bad habit is not using bullet points. So you see long text, a lot of text there, information there without bullet points. This is also a bad habit. And people used to apply too much style or unnecessary animation just to show people that they know how to use animation and it's become too stylish. This is also a bad habit. And it's also a bad habit for you to have a PowerPoint presentation without using any image. PowerPoint presentation requires you to use a lot of images and pictures. And this is a bad habit. You see the entire PowerPoint presentation, you don't have a single image. Another one is people not facing the audience. You come and you are making this presentation and you turn your back at your audience or you're looking at the screen or you turn to the side looking at the screen. So not facing your audience is a bad habit and some people will go in and out of their presentation you are in this slide and you close this slide you go to the a website or you play a video or show a picture so everything you want to do should be inside the slide i'm going to talk about it too or you see someone talking too fast or too slow this is mostly common in academic environment where you see people talking too fast or too slow 
now we have known what to avoid then what do we need to do to have that effective powerpoint presentation number one is each slide should not contain more than 40 words each slide should not contain more than 40 words 40 words are the extreme myself i try all the time to keep it within the range of 20 words per slide or if possible less than that so each slide should not contain more than 40 words and imagine it's going to be with less text each slide should contain a picture or pictures our brains like pictures because the vision triumphs all other sensory organs. Our emotions are easily triggered by pictures and it makes the presentation entertaining and lively. Human beings are good at remembering images and that is why we tend to remember more of the things we see. After three days, you only remember 10% of what you heard and you can remember up to 65% of the things you saw. So if you want to sell more or convince more, use images in your presentations. The brain gets bored and tired easily while reading only text because the brain looks at each letter as a picture and it must perceive each letter in a word and then join them to make a meaning. And that takes time. But with pictures, it becomes easy. When presenting your picture, bring it along with a text on the side. So put the picture and text side by side. Don't bring them one before the other, but side by side. Accurate perception of information is achieved when involving the participation of more than one sensory organ. So it is better to stimulate more senses of your audience by mixing pictures, text, and audio, which is your voice. Use trigger words or phrases to remind yourself of the ideas you want to discuss. The audience should focus and rely more on what you say than what is on the screen. If you need additional notes, you can use the note space just below your slide so that it can only be shown under the presenter's view. The audience will not see the additional information. The idea is you need to connect with your audience and that cannot happen if the audience are more connected to the projector wall screen than you. So make the discussion more about what you say with some augmentation of pictures, a little text. You can use animation for a text so that the text will come one after the other. This means you need to master the content of your presentation. I have to emphasize so much on this so that you can efficiently explain your points with a little trigger from the short phrases in your slides. This will enable you create that heart-to-heart -heart connection. Should you look more at the projector screen or your computer screen? I suggest for most of the time you should read from the computer in front of you unless you want to point for deeper illustrations or engage with the audience. By then you can step forward and point at the projector screen for more illustration or explanation. But your default screen should be your computer from which you read your text. The projector screen is for your audience. If you look more on the projector wall screen then you are no longer the focus. Though it is good to use animation because motion enhances attention and makes it entertaining. But don't go overboard with too much animation and excessive styles. But remember to always use bullet points for each point. Organization of your presentation is also key because it helps retain your audience attention. So introduce segmentation of your presentation and expectations in the beginning. Inform your audience about what you are going to talk to them and how you segment your own presentation. And like I used to say, insert some hooks in your presentation to create emotion because emotion leads to long-term memory. So apply these hooks. These hooks are emotion charges you give your audience. This serves as emotionally charged stimuli and give them something like fear, laughter, happiness, nostalgia, 
or astonishment. I would recommend you get the most recent version of the Microsoft Office. The recent version of the PowerPoint software makes it very easy to create amazing presentations. The new software gives you design suggestions that suit your presentation, but it requires your computer to be connected to the internet. Make sure you insert any media file or link you want to use in your presentation inside the slides. Avoid going in and out of your slides. In case the projector went off, you should be able to continue without a hitch because you have already mastered your presentation and you should come with a printed copy of your slides in case of power outage or breakdown of the projector. So I hope when next you are making your presentation, you will apply some of these tips and deliver that incredible presentation. And we look forward to having more of these classes so that we can do most of these things practical and we can go deeper with this. Thank you so much.